since Nightmare Dage is back again, I thought it would be helpful to do yet another video on him. Um, especially because a lot of things have changed since the last time he was available in March of this year. Since then, we've gotten Sea Kings, Mini Rex, and a lot of interesting balance changes, especially with Tactical Mercenary. So, with the introduction of Armored Roots, and most recently, Sea King Spirit, as class-wide abilities, it really has made it possible for every class to beat bosses, and especially alley bosses. Whereas before, a class would be rendered unviable for bosses, if they were lacking in shielding, or loop healing capability, or both, with these two cores, it is possible to cover for at least one of these weaknesses. And in an ally fight, you can potentially cover both. I'm thinking it's quite possible to take down Dage with any combination of classes, if the defending player uses Roots, and the other player uses Seekings. I'd imagine the only real struggle might be a combination of two mercenaries. Like the recent Nightwraith video, in this video I will be covering three battles. First, the best setups for farming and speed, then I'll do safe playing for good measure, and lastly I'll finish it off with uh, something sort of unthinkable, uh, something that was probably never intended to be possible, and that is a solo battle. Of Nightmare Dage. Okay, so as I often do, I've chosen my fastest attempt to show here, and while the tendency with doing that is the gameplay presented here might be a bit riskier or even idealized compared to the typical run. It is still what I'd use for farming drops. The Blood Mage is your standard dex caster with level 1 Parasite, basically just spamming Fireball and Rex, healing when needed, and using Maelstrom after Parasite. The Bounty Hunter's job is to prioritize Smokescreen. Uh, for the Blood Mage, I would try to take advantage of the turns that Smoke is off to heal. Smoke is sustainable with Static Grenade for a couple loops, but Smoke will eventually overtake Static because you're using it one turn sooner every loop. On top of that, you will have to heal at certain points in a battle. So the energy problem is supposed to be solved by using Seeking Spirit. Either when you have you have no better moves to make, or you know that Static Grenade won't uh, cover that loop. A lot of times, I'll purposely drain myself by using Poison to try to facilitate the process. I wouldn't spam it recklessly, but it is a good skill for doing damage before he gets into heal range. Safe method looks pretty similar to what was shown in the Night Wraith video. Having high health on attack to mercenary is really the key to making it so that there's really basically no way to lose. The idea here is to sort of just treat it like a solo battle for attack to mercenary and use the Blood Mage's defensive abilities as backup. It's sort of a simple way to look at it, but there's really not much else to it. In fact, it's safe enough that. Um, you don't need to use Sea Kings on Blood Mage, and I did not in this battle. And I might even say it could be feasible to do it without Roots.
let's now take a look at the solo battle. Um, as you can see here, my idiot partner got so traumatized he turned into a fruit and ran off. Uh, jokes aside, despite how good Tactical Mercenary is right now, soloing Nightmare Dage really is no easy feat. You do have to use Powerfly to take his Bludgeon, and it is very much a traditional tank style fight, where you have to make it to the drain state and slug it out from there. Because of the long and repetitive nature of this type of fight, I like to compare it to sort of running a simulation a couple hundred times, with every heal loop representing one simulation, and a chance to win is basically just the probability of every simulation being a success. It's a fight against RNG where the chance to win decreases as the battle progresses. As you can see, Gage has a whopping 55,000 energy to get through before the drain stage, and the fact that he has Pulse Punch makes it even harder, not only because it's stronger than Plasma Grenade, but also because it hardly costs any energy. This fight actually reminds me a lot of back in the day in 2017, killing a normal Dage with the old Tactical Mercenary when it was still extremely difficult. As usual with these kinds of fights, once you manage to drain, you enter into sort of a second phase of the battle that's arguably even more challenging. Here I have to chip away at a full 35,000 health while playing full defensively and skipping turns to avoid his pulse punch. In this case, you could argue that the pulse punch change may have actually been a good thing because it is now his lowest um, energy costing skill at 130 energy. Cheap shot costs 180, so there is some wiggle room, but it is still possible to give him cheap shot if I have to rage frenzy. On the other hand, Pulse Punch isn't to be taken lightly because it can stun. Because of the stun factor, it's possible for him to stun, um, followed by Augs, and if one or both of those crits, um, you can easily lose. More broadly, the stun chant simply introduces that possibility of two consecutive attacks, which effectively doubles that safety threshold uh, you can be at to make sure you aren't in kill range at any point, and that is amplified even more when you consider the possibility that both attacks can crit. Overall, this was a brutal fight, and there were many scenarios where I objectively could have lost. Because of the skipping, the total time it took to win was just over 4 hours. I think this battle holds the record for the longest fight ever, in terms of rounds coming in at 1,476 rounds. Hopefully that was fun to watch and stay tuned for the next video.